What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. Uh, we've had some interesting things, of course, happen today. We found out that Dak Prescott had a cleanup surgery on his left non-throwing arm. And um, for me, that explains actually quite a bit. Um, a lot of people say, oh, well, it's his non-throwing arm, but that isn't the whole picture. Because, see, throwing a football at the NFL level, you need everything to be perfect. I mean, literally, you need to be able to plant you need to be able to push off. You need your mechanics there. You need your other arm to be able to pull through. And if you don't have some of those things, you can lose a little bit of velocity, a little bit of accuracy, and so on. So it does make a difference. Now, the good news for Dak is that they don't expect to miss any of the offseason workouts or anything like that. But probably would be on a pitch count uh, going into the season where Dak now has to start realizing that, you know, I'm getting older, I've got – I've had a few injuries that now I've got to be a little bit more careful than I used to be about how I treat my body, uh, making sure I'm warmed up and things like that before I just go out and play basketball or anything else. Um, all these things are cumulative. Now, as opposed to Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy Garoppolo is going to have shoulder surgery, and it's going to be more like the summer before he's going to be ready uh, to start throwing and working out, which – um, they say won't hamper his ability to get a trade, um, but I'm not so sure on that one. Um, an interesting thing when it comes to quarterbacks right now, as much as we thought that a lot of teams would have guys on the go, it may not be. Um, looking at Kirk Cousins, knowing that he's a $45 million cap hit, uh, apparently the Vikings are planning on rolling with Kirk Cousins. They turned down an offer from... Uh, Carolina basically called to say, hey, we're interested in Kirk Cousins. What do you think? Click. Um, Matty Ice with um, Atlanta, of course, another $45 million man uh, there in Atlanta. Atlanta, Arthur Blank is basically saying, you know, we're going to roll with um, Matty Ice as well, even though he's got the big cap number. Um, and even Green Bay. Green Bay says they don't have a single offer right now for Aaron Rodgers, and they're negotiating a contract with him. So what was looking like we're going to have a lot of – oh, and can't forget Jameis Winston. Uh, the Saints are working on restructuring contracts to get themselves that $75 million and get themselves under the cap and maybe looking to bring back Jameis Winston. So all of a sudden where we thought there was going to be a lot of quarterbacks that were going to be moving around, it may not be the case at all. And teams that are missing – Quarterbacks, no, well, they have a problem. Um, today was interesting because, of course, we have Stephen Jones, who maybe it's me, but I think Stephen Jones is beginning to take more and more of the reins of the Dallas Cowboys. Over the last couple of days here with the Combine, you've heard Stephen Jones doing more press conferences and interviews and putting out more information or misinformation, I should say. And especially when it comes to um, what they're planning on doing with Amari Cooper and Demarcus Lawrence. Um, I hate to say it, but listening to him, I get the same vibe kind of when he used to talk about Des Bryant the last year that he was there. Um, you can kind of see where it's not, you know, with Zeke Elliott. Oh, yeah, Zeke, I love that guy. You know, of course he's going to be back. You know, he's got the contract, so he's got to be here. But you could feel that vibe, and then Amari Cooper, you feel a totally different one with them. And it may be that they look at it and say, you know, we can get a whole bunch of money here, and their strength in numbers with the money that we save with him gets us under the cap. We can keep some of our own guys, you know, and we're hearing that they want to hold on to Randy Gregory as well as some other guys. So I'm sitting here, and I believe that Jerry Jones Jr., Stephen Jones, is really taking over. You would think that Stephen Jones is the owner of the Cowboys, the way he's been working the system here the last couple of days. It seems like he's got all the juice, and he is the one that's kind of making these decisions and things. You know, I, I'm, I'm just kind of mystified. Maybe I'm wrong on this, 
but you have that feeling, or at least I have that feeling that he is. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how this all works out because in the past we've held on to guys and said, we can't lose these guys, you know, we're, we're not an organization without getting these guys here. And you see when we've gone through and we've signed a lot of these guys that it seems like it's always blown up in our face. And in hindsight, looking back at some of the moves that the Cowboys have made with big contracts, and then, of course, not going for the free agents, that we end up having more problems than we had before signing some of these guys. In some regards, you look at it and say, we should have let them walk. And the thing about this now is, when you look at what's happened over the course of the last three Super Bowls, Kansas City was actually in cap hell three years ago. But they found a way to sign Pat Mahomes. They went out. They got free agents that fit what they needed to do. And they were able to go ahead and go to the Super Bowl, win one, and then go to the second one and come close on that one. And, of course, being in the AFC Championship game, you saw Tampa Bay literally go from, you know, uh, one of the worst teams in football to being Super Bowl champion, basically, with Tom Brady and some other free agents. And we've now seen the Rams go out, trade for Matthew Stafford, along with all the other people that trade for. It is now a chance to buy a Super Bowl or at least give yourself a better chance to win the Super Bowl. We've been told by Jerry Jones that it would just be a matter of how big a check if I could just write a check. Well, it may not be one check that you need to write. It's several checks. And if the Cowboys really are thinking that, yeah, we can do something, I don't know that next season is going to be, um, you know, any, I don't think there's going to be another season that's going to be any bigger opportunity for the Cowboys than next year. A lot of the teams in the NFC have taken some hits and won't be as good the following year. You've got some pieces, some of which you don't know for how long with Tyron Smith and Zeke Elliott, as well as some of the other guys, you need to strike while the iron's hot. And you need to push all your chips in to try and do something. And Stephen Jones, if you are, in fact, you know, the new owner of the Cowboys, and we just haven't been notified, it, you got to understand you got to do things a little different than your daddy to get a different result. Well, that's all I got for you guys. And um, I will be checking with you all later. I'll be back to do my fireside chat. There's the box from my man, Evan, who sent me that football. Oh, my God, the football's on my, my desk there. I love it. I love it. And with that being said, it's time for us to uh, – 